Cartoon Network, one of the most popular and successful animation channels in the history of television. From unconventional beginnings to breaking the mold, there is no denying the impact that Cartoon Network has had on the world of animation. It was willing to invest in new creators early on and support their ideas, to go beyond their initial lineup of Hanna-Barbera and MGM shows. And the final result? A wave of brilliant and timeless cartoons. Their 25th anniversary will be this year. That's a quarter century of entertainment, and I think it's worthy of discussion to see how it has impacted and continues to shape the animation industry. So, let's take a closer look at the history of Cartoon Network. Before we jump into it, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Verve, a new app from the people over at Crunchyroll. Verve is home to your favorite channels. It's a way for viewers to discover more content from creators they all know and love, and support their newest creations. Stick around until the end of the video to learn more and get a free 7-day trial by clicking on the link in the description. Alright, let's get to it. When it comes to timelines, Cartoon Network's history can be split up in two different ways. First, there is the logo timeline. This is divided into eras that are based on different bumpers and graphical elements of its period. It began with the checkerboard era, followed by Powerhouse, CN City, Yes, Summer 2007, Fall, Nudes, Check It, and Dimensional. As you can see, there is some overlap between these eras, and that can be somewhat confusing. The other timeline is based on who is in charge at Cartoon Network at the time. There is the Cohen era, the Samples era, the Snyder era, and the Miller era. In my opinion, this timeline is much easier to follow since there is no overlap, so we're going to roll with this one. But none of these timelines would be possible if it wasn't for one eccentric businessman, Ted Turner. Well, you know, they, 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 primarily children watch cartoons, but, 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 but adults watch cartoons too. In fact, in the evening, on the average evening, more people, more adults are tuned to the Cartoon Network than are tuned to CNN. Ted's origin in the world of business began when he inherited his father's billboard company in 1963. Sadly, it was through unpleasant means, as his father committed suicide and left Ted holding the door. But Ted took the company by the horns and led it to prosperity. With his new wealth, he started to purchase radio stations. He then sold them off in 1969 in order to acquire WJRJ, a TV station located in Atlanta, Georgia. It was a floundering company at the time that held little promise, but Ted was going to turn that around. Television began to grow rapidly, and Ted was able to profit off of that. WJRJ eventually became WTBS, a powerhouse channel that featured classic shows, sports, and old cartoons. In 1980, Ted launched the Cable News Network, aka CNN, a 24-7 news channel that many people initially doubted. I mean, why would a person need access to the news any time of the day? Just watch it in the evening, right? Times were changing though, and people were starting to appreciate access to the news any time of the day. The formula for CNN would eventually lend itself over to Cartoon Network, another 24-7 content channel. In 1986, TBS bought MGM UA for $1.5 billion. The acquisition did not go smoothly though, as there was enormous debt on Ted's end. It forced him to sell off parts of his purchase, and after only 74 days, he sold MGM back to its original owners. But he was able to keep a good chunk of MGM's film and television library. When I bought MGM, I got the cartoons too. Got the MGM cartoons and, uh, see there was another cartoon library. We got the United, the, the uh, Warner Brothers pre-50 cartoons. Kirk Corian had those too. 
And when I bought the Warner Pre-50 movies, which was Casablanca, we got 500, uh, the early Bugs Bunny cartoons, uh, Elmer Fudd. And then we got Tom and Jerry with the MGM cartoons. So I had a thousand theatrical cartoons, which was about 60% or 65% of all the theatrical cartoons that had been made up to that time. And that was good because they, they're timeless, you know. Bugs Bunny's still good even without a cell phone. In 1991, Turner purchased Hanna-Barbera, another well-known animation studio. It featured characters such as Scooby-Doo, Yogi Bear, The Flintstones, and many, many others. Ted now owned the majority of popular cartoon characters in the world and would even go on to create some of his own. But for the library that he acquired, it only made sense to create a channel where all of these cartoons can be watched all day, every day. The first era for Cartoon Network was the Cohen era. They call it that because the channel was under the command of Betty Cohen, the first president of Cartoon Network. Previously, Betty worked as a director of on-air promotion at Nickelodeon and then was a general manager at TNT. But in January of 1992, she had a chance to be in charge of her own network. She said that her goal was to be the most creative brand for animated entertainment. With over 8,500 hours of vintage cartoons, they had plenty of content to work with. And on October 1st, 1992, Cartoon Network was officially launched. We're talking tune here. In order to master the fine art of talking tune, you must feel the sploin, be the boy, enjoy the bam inside of you, and splat, there you have it. Blame, blam, blam. No, you want the best cartoons, the coolest characters, 24 hours a day. Boing, boing. Bam, splat. Boing, boing. Bam, splat. Now you're talking tune on the world's first Cartoon Network. We're talking tune here. Cartoon Network, which was originally called The Cartoon Network, was initially available in over 2 million homes, but those numbers would rapidly increase in the coming years. Now, Cohen understood the importance of marketing and establishing a brand. That was their goal right out the gate, and they started to advertise on their sister networks. It slices, it dices, it stirs and fries. It's the world's first Cartoon Network, and it will do almost everything. But wait, there's more. A 24-hour supply of your favorite top tune stars. Why, you'll be talking tune in no time flat. It's all the beauty and excitement your family deserves and more. The Cartoon Network. Bugs Bunny, The Flintstones, The Jetsons, Space Ghost, Tom and Jerry, Cartoon Network had plenty of firepower, and they used it. They typically aired the cartoons in blocks, but also had some unique segments, such as Toon Heads, a show that featured trivia about classic cartoons. You could truly see the creativity that was coming from the network. They were willing to try new and crazy things in order to grow their brand. The checkerboard logo, the goofy bumpers, it was firing on all cylinders and was making a name for itself. In 1993, Cartoon Network aired a Bugs Bunny marathon called June Bugs and was temporarily number one in ratings. They knew how to put a tasteful spin on their vintage properties, and that led to some amazing results. They even had a contest to see who was the best cartoon mom. Wilma Flintstone, Jane Jetson, or Race Bannon? Guess who won? But on April 15th, 1994, Cartoon Network premiered its first fully produced show, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, a parody talk show of the Hanna-Barbera superhero, and it was a massive success. But you're supposed to be in jail. Yeah, and you're supposed to be dumpster diving for ham scraps, you six-piece chicken McNobody. Get out of my seat! This wasn't the first original series on Cartoon Network. That title belongs to The Moxie Show. But Space Ghost was the one that made the network stand out. As in, it wasn't just a channel for old cartoons. Cartoon Network had original ideas of their own, and they were starting to grow. On October 21st, 1994, Cartoon Network Studios was founded, and on January 20th, 1995, World Premiere Tunes made its debut, though it would eventually be called 
what a cartoon. Now, this show played a very important role in the growth of the channel. Cartoon Network wanted to recapture the old magic that led to the creation of its vintage shows, and that required high budgets and artistic freedom for its creators. But this was a smart investment. These young artists were able to create quality shorts that could be showcased on the network to see what cartoons had potential and resonated with their audience. This led to the creation of some of the best shows on the network. Dexter's Lab, The Powerpuff Girls, Johnny Bravo, Courage, The Cowardly Dog. Heck, there was even an early version of Family Guy, though it was never picked up. Wow, a dog that speaks English. What? You know, you know, I once had a Jack Russell Terrier that spoke Dutch, but I, I couldn't understand a word he was saying. Cartoon Network saw the success that Nickelodeon had with its Nicktoons, and they desired the same. To have both classic and new cartoons, Betty Cohen was very supportive of this direction and was a big fan of Dexter's Lab. This show, created by the legendary Gindy Tartakovsky, was the first spin-off from What a Cartoon. And on April 28, 1996, Dexter's Lab made its official debut on Cartoon Network. It was a massive success, one that built confidence and was soon followed by other popular shows. They were fun, they were energetic, and they reflected the animations of old. This new wave was dubbed Cartoon Cartoons, and it really improved the network's brand. Less than two years after its launch, Cartoon Network was one of the most popular channels on cable and would only continue to grow. In 1996, Turner merged with Time Warner. Now Cartoon Network had access to all of Warner's library and not just the post 1950s stuff. They also had access to DC and the new cartoons from Warner Brothers. At this point, Cartoon Network's library was outstanding and one wondered how it could possibly get any better. Getting late. Boredom setting in, nothing's on, and you're too tired to hit the sack. Don't worry, we're here for you. Every Saturday at midnight, Toonami is taking over the TV. Five hours of your favorite Toonami program. In 1997, Toonami arrived and was another wonderful addition to the network. For many Western audiences, anime wasn't too accessible, but now they could watch it on Cartoon Network. Sailor Moon, Voltron, Dragon Ball Z, all complemented by a chilled out space theme with a cool robot host called Tom. In June of 1999, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays launched. It was a popular block of programming that featured premieres, new episodes, and reruns of original series from the network. <laughs> is that it? No, that is not it. At this point, the new programming was overshadowing the classics. This wasn't necessarily a bad thing, though and Cartoon Network still aired their vintage shows on their schedule. But in April of 2000, many of these old properties were moved over to Boomerang, the retirement home for Cartoon Network. This is Boomerang from Cartoon Network. In 2001, Cartoon Network was at the top of their game. It was one of the most popular cable channels. Profits were soaring. It had original programming that not only rivaled, but surpassed Nickelodeon. All in all, things were really good and seemed to be maintaining that direction. But on July 16, 2001, Betty Cohen announced that she would be stepping down from Cartoon Network. It's hard to say why Betty left Cartoon Network. Was there a disagreement between executives? Maybe another network offered her a better deal. Who's to say? But the fact remained, Cartoon Network lost its leader. So, what now? Who was going to step up and take the reins? Enter Jim Samples. Just like Betty, Jim too had experience at Turner Entertainment and was promoted to lead Cartoon Network after Betty resigned. This was a first for Cartoon Network, 
and people held their breath to see what would happen next. But fortunately, things were initially in good hands, and the first major breakthrough for Jim was Adult Swim. No kids under 17 though, so that's new too. Sunday at 10, Adult Swim on Cartoon Network. Launched on September 2nd, 2001, Adult Swim is a programming block of mature content for older audiences. Since most kids were going to bed at night, it only made sense to introduce an evening segment for adults, one filled with original programs, reruns, anime, and sketch comedy. It's free real estate. Adult Swim had its own brand that evolved over the years. One that started with swimming pools, but eventually gave way to a black backdrop with a white font. It is a very successful block and remains popular to this day. In 2002, Cartoon Network released its first film with the Powerpuff Girls movie. Directed by the show's creator, Craig McCracken, the movie performed modestly. It wasn't a smash hit, but it was a good step forward. Another great addition to the network was the introduction of the CN City Bumpers. It was the new branding image for the network and featured different cartoon characters interacting with one another. You seem to like black shirts quite a lot. And it looks like you like it in pink. Oh, I'm just saying. Oops. Sorry about that. Now, this isn't to say that this was a first for the network. They had plenty of interesting crossover bumpers, but now all of these tunes had a city of their own. Hey, hey, why don't you use some chemical ash? <laughs> The years went on and some shows came to an end, but there were some new contenders. Samurai Jack, Billy and Mandy, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. The network still had quality content to offer, but around 2006, Cartoon Network started to go in a different direction. In December of 2006, Cartoon Network aired its first live action movie, Reanimated. We're all in your head. Except Pickles, he's in your ear. Reanimated premieres Friday, December 8th on Cartoon Network. It wasn't all live action and featured some cartoon characters, but this was uncharted territory for the network. The channel was primarily for animation, but it was starting to give way to this new trend. Now, many people have blamed the following president, Stuart Snyder, for this creeping change at Cartoon Network, but it officially began under Jim Sample's era in 2006. Reanimated would eventually get its own series in 2007 called Out of Jimmy's Head. There were also other live action shows on the way. When asked about the lineup of shows, Jim said, most of the stuff coming through the pipeline is animation, but you shouldn't be surprised to see more live action programming, but we're predominantly an animated network and that's not changing anytime soon. According to some sources, many of these shows were never completed due to the 2007-2008 Writers Guild strike, but this would not stop Cartoon Network from trying again in the near future. But in February of 2007, Jim Samples resigned from Cartoon Network following a bomb scare in Boston. Photographs documenting 17 sites where the devices were planted and later found at the tops of buildings, under bridges, at Fenway Park, all across the city. This little creature that lights up in the dark and makes an obscene gesture is on his website. It was also found over the entryway to a comic book store in Alston. In an effort to promote Aqua Teen Hunger Force, packages were left all over the city and that created a panic. For Jim, this was the perfect time to leave Cartoon Network. As I have already said, Cartoon Network was beginning to accept live action shows into its roster. This began with Jim Samples, but would truly evolve under Stuart Snyder, the new president of Cartoon Network. Stewart stepped in after Jim resigned and took control in May of 2007. 
He wanted to continue the live action trend for Cartoon Network, and rumor has it that he wanted to bring golf and military training shows to the network. Fortunately, that never happened. But 2009 was the year of live action shows, with the programming block CN Real. Real kids doing real stuff in real situations. Hey, hey, hey. Wednesday nights on CN Real. Brain Rush, Destroy Bill Destroy. Dude, what would happen? These shows were not successful on the network, and most of them came to a quick end. The CN Real segment was discontinued in 2010, with most of the live action shows ending around the same time. In 2007, the CN City era came to an end, and the channel tried its hand with other types of branding. Yes, Summer 2007. Nudes. They were going through these images quite quickly, and seemed to be treading water. Many of the original shows from the 90s and early 2000s were coming to an end, and were moved off the network. But there was hope. In 2008, a new project was announced, called Cartoon Institute. It was the spiritual successor to What a Cartoon, and had the same goal in mind to find the next wave of new creations. Headed by Craig McCracken and Rob Renzetti, this was a recipe for success, but it never officially saw the light of day. The project was scrapped, and only 14 of the 39 shorts were completed. Uncle Grandpa and Regular Show were two of those 14 shows, and were able to find a spot on Cartoon Network, but most of the rest were uploaded to Cartoon Network's website. In 2007, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays came to an end. Toonami soon followed in 2008, and most of the old shows were being cleared out. An interesting addition to the channel was made in 2008, with acquired programming from Teletoons, a Canadian television channel. 16, Total Drama Island, Johnny Test. Some of these shows found moderate success, but were much lower quality when compared to Cartoon Network's original programming. Mr. Teacher Man says you're not paying attention in class. He's got it in for me. He's way nasty, crazy, and very unattractive. Cartoon Network had some good animated shows of their own, though, such as Flapjack and Chowder. There was also a lot of promise with a new series called Symbionic Titan but it never found success. Overall, many people look at Snyder's era as the dark age for Cartoon Network. Old shows were removed, new shows were not as good, live action programs were pushed, beloved segments were cancelled. The first few years for Snyder were pretty rough, but things would start to turn around in 2010, with the arrival of some popular cartoons. <laughs> In 2007, Nickelodeon made the mistake of turning down Adventure Time. The idea for the show was then pitched to Cartoon Network, and was made into a full series. It premiered in 2010, and was incredibly successful. Regular Show soon followed, and made its debut on September 6, 2010. Whoa! Despite the bizarre choices and mistakes made by Cartoon Network, this was somewhat the turning point, and the channel would slowly enter a renaissance period in the coming years. In May of 2012, Toonami returned to the network, and has remained ever since. Other popular shows arrived, and gave Cartoon Network a new but familiar look. The Amazing World of Gumball, Clarence, Steven Universe. It was nice to see the network return to its roots. Old fans were returning. New fans were staying. Things were starting to turn around. But in 2014, Snyder had a falling out with President David Levy at Turner Entertainment. This led to his removal at Cartoon Network. In July of 2014, 
Christina Miller was named the new president of Cartoon Network. Prior to this, she worked at Turner and was in charge of young adult consumer products. She also worked with the sports marketing department. At this point, there isn't much to say about Christina. While being interviewed, she said that she was excited for the new Powerpuff Girls and the message it would send to young people. But the show was met with much criticism. It wasn't made by its original creator and has abandoned its original formula. Instead of being a superhero show, it's more slice of life and has a modern spin on it. If you need someone to sing so bad, you do it! The network also seems to be stuck on Teen Titans Go and continues to push that as their premiere cartoon. Ironic, considering that it's not even an original series from the network studio. But there have been some good decisions, such as the return of Samurai Jack. Despite being only 10 episodes long, it was met with high praise and set the bar for reboots and reimaginings on the network. That's 50 credits, bud. Trust me, babe, I'm good for it. Yeah, well, the last guy I trusted did this to me. Oh, it's all good, Babu. Aku will give me anything once he hears the news. <laughs> Whoa, what a freak. Look like a talking penis. From what I can tell though, the main push from Miller has been more of a digital one to connect their audience via the internet and interact with them online. A big change that might be occurring soon is a possible merger between Turner Time Warner and AT&T, but it's still in negotiations and might be turned down by the US government. If it is approved though, I am not sure what it will do to Cartoon Network. Hopefully, it will just maintain status quo. No! Zero, zero, zero! Gracias por limar los servicios de AT&T. Uh, I don't understand what you're saying! <laughs> Overall, Cartoon Network is now in a much better place. Yeah, it might not have the same feel as the old days, but it has vastly improved when compared to 2008. Many of its major shows, though, are starting to come to an end. Regular show finished in January of 2017. Adventure Time will be ending in 2018, and I imagine other cartoons will soon follow suit. But there are some new shows that hold promise, and there's also quite the selection of pilot cartoons for the network to work with. All in all, Cartoon Network was a major step forward for both animation and cable television. It became home for the cartoons of old, a place where they could connect with a new young audience, but also reacquaint themselves with the fans they grew up with. It was a place for young, bold creators to spread their wings and share their ideas to the world, where new artists were given the chance to pursue their creations. This led to the birth of a new wave of animation, one that gave Cartoon Network an original image and allowed them to grow. They had their good times, they had their bad times, but they were never afraid to try new things, to put their faith in people and see where it takes them. Cartoon Network will always hold a special place in the heart of its viewers, past, present, and future. Hey guys, just wanted to give another shout out to the sponsor of this video, Verve. You can download the Verve app now on Xbox, PlayStation, iOS, or Android by clicking on the link in the description. It has all of your favorite anime, both subbed or dubbed in 1080p. Right now, Attack on Titan Season 2 has me on the edge of my seat, and My Hero Academia Season 2 is helping me get my superhero fix. Both of these shows are available via Crunchyroll and Funimation, and if you sign up for the combo pack, you can watch everything ad-free. Plus some other awesome content, like Cartoon Hangover's Bee and Puppy Cat, Bravest Warriors, or Rooster Teeth's Ruby. It's a great way to support your favorite creators. So, what are you waiting for? Check out the link in the description to get a 7-day free trial of the Verve Combo Pack and start watching your favorite shows on whatever device you want today.